When I first heard of it, I was just like, well, maybe I'm just dreaming. But then I realized that racism is so close to my family and to my home. We are now about a week away from Wednesday evening when beautiful, godly, caring people were spending time together in prayer and Bible study. And a young man came into this wonderful historic church and he killed them. When they died, a piece of all of us died, and so we are all hurting. One of the victims was a good friend of mine. It was a shock to me when I saw her image in the newspaper. It was hurting. It still hurts to see the memorials. It comforted me. Somebody's church, somebody's grandmother, somebody's mother, somebody's dear friends were gunned down. Pure evil. And there's lots of justified anger. So the fact that what we're seeing is this outpouring and this cry for forgiveness and unity happening so quickly, the family members saying we forgive them. We want them to repent and we want them to see justice, but we forgive them. That's unreal, that's, that's God. It causes me to pull on a whole higher level of faith, um, soul searching, but it also provokes a higher act of love. This is changing the world. And I believe that it has touched the heart of men, women, boys and girls, and not just for the moment, but for a lifetime. I just told them that nine people lost their lives here and we just wanted to come and pay respect to the victims. Sad that someone could be filled with so much hate. I grew up here. I've experienced the racial division that we have here, how my people hurt, how my ancestors hurt. I have to relive that thing every single day that I wake up in my black skin. Until we come to terms with we got a problem, we can't address it, not fairly. We can no longer pretend the proverbial elephant is not in the room. When he's trampling over us, when we are being crushed and when we can't even breathe because he's here. There's no denying it that Charleston has a huge history of slavery and racial tension, and it sadly continues to this day. There's still tension there. It's gonna be a long process that everybody has to work towards. The best way to stop all this racism, instead of using hate and violence, just use love. That young man that came in here and did this horrific act, he wasn't born that way. He wasn't born a racist. He wasn't born hateful. Somebody had to take the time to teach him, this is how you hate. I think support is about action. Yeah. I think you show support with your feet. And so coming out and expressing it, and expressing it with our children. I'm very sad, so um, I hope the best for the people who ha haven't gotten hurt and, I, and they lost their friends or family, and that must really be sad for them. Thank you, sir. By them coming out, it tells us that you know you you feel you feel our pain. I want to take away from here all of the roses and flowers and teddy bears and expression of love.
and allow us to utilize that on a daily basis in our homes, in our businesses, just everywhere we go. It should not take this tragedy for us to even embrace one another. We can no longer be silent about issues that divide us. Now it's an opportunity for us to speak, to say what's on our hearts, but then to start looking for real, real solutions.